تفضل سلام تمام Celebrating the birthday of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Yeah. So their question is, why don't we celebrate the greatest event in the world? Huh? Uh huh. All right. Okay. Celebrating the birthday of the Prophet وسلم, is it allowed in Islam? Hmm. Is it a matter of deen, religion? Is it a matter of deen? That means if we celebrate, this will be a qurba, a qurba that will drive us closer to Allah. Is it what you think? So it's a matter of worship. If it's a matter of worship, We wonder why the Prophet didn't make that kind of worship. Why the companions didn't make that kind of worship. Did they, did they miss it and then we catch it? Can't be. But because if we say that, that means we are more keen to do the good deeds than them. And that's an insult to them. It is an offense, an insult against them. We shouldn't be saying that. So why did, why did they not do it while we do it? In fact, if, if this is a matter of love, we will find Christians more loving to Jesus than the companions to Muhammad because the Christians are celebrating the birthday of Jesus while the companions did not celebrate the birthday of Muhammad. So that means the followers of Jesus now They are better than the companions of the Prophet Muhammad. There are many, 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 many evil consequences for this. And the Prophet ﷺ said, There is nothing that drives you closer to Jannah, but I have encouraged you to do. And there's nothing that drives you closer to hell, but I warned you from doing. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِن تُطِيعُوهُ تَهْتَدُوا If you obey him, you'll be guided. And we're obeying him. And by the way, we don't celebrate the prophetic event once in a year. We are making a daily, daily, daily celebration for his sunnah. And that's what he wants from us. Sana. Can you please tell the brothers? You're making big noise. Yeah, I think yes. Yes. Okay, I think inshallah that's uh, enough for the question. That that clarifies the question inshallah. inshallah. Thank you. Zakallah khair Is there anyone, anybody else has a question? Yeah, tafadhal. Shaykh, you know fudge. You know when before you come to fudge in the in the you have to pray to to uh, Okay, the question, the question needs to be clarified. You said he performs, before he comes to, to perform Salat al-Fajr, he prays two at home, then when he comes, he prays two here. There is no... I mean the Jama'ah. Yeah, the Sunnah always is to, perform, to be performed at home. Okay? Suppose you did it at home, then you came here, and the jama'ah 
had not been established yet. Then you perform two rak'ah as Tahiyat al-Masjid. Tahiyat al-Masjid, okay, Tahiyat al-Masjid is any performance of any prayer you indulge yourself in the mosque. Right? You're talking about this, we're still talking about the Sunnah? About the Sunnah of Fajr. You can pray it at any time after the rising of the sun, preferably. And you, and you still have, you still can do it even until the time of Dhuhr. Okay? Because we, it's, it is viewed as something good that you missed and you can still do. And note here, that the Prophet ﷺ used not to be more uh, uh, strict regarding performing the Sunnah except for the Sunnah of Fajr. Even if he was in trouble, he used to perform it. Not any other Sunnah, especially Sunnah al Fajr. Hmm? Right, okay. Yeah, the first thing is that uh, he shows serious dedication in worship. Seriously, daily. He's youth. And I know that those kind of youth people, they go to the universities. No, no, I'm talking about that. Teenagers are about teenagers. College. Right? School, college, university, okay? If he has the, the religious sense now, and he's coming to Allah. First thing he should uh, do is to uh, is to improve his prayer. Firstly, okay. No matter what he does outside, he should remember that this salah, if he performs it on the right way, on the best mode, okay, this salah will be. <coughs> will be a preventer to him from falling in sins sooner or later. It may not be the, the first time. It may not be in a month, in a two months. But once he keeps striving, performing the prayers sincerely, focusing, fearing when he finished it, that it may not be accepted of him, that's a good improvement, number one. Number two. Seeking knowledge, because uh, because the youth, they are very active, okay, and they can be taken emotionally. Emotion is something that we cannot deny, but it's dangerous at the same time. If we use it only apart from knowledge, okay, so we should seek knowledge. We should be seeking knowledge, okay. And try to fill your time with da'wah. Engage yourself with those groups who are working for da'wah. I like those people, especially in the universities, in the colleges. Okay, engage yourself. Because da'wah activates your heart. The heart can die because of sins, because lack of remembrance, etc., etc. What is the activator? The refresher. You know the meaning of the word refreshment? The refresher of the heart is to give down. Work on that. Start with yourself. Don't say, oh, I, I, I want to do this for people. Start with this. Build yourself. Establish yourself in terms of knowledge and a straight way of dedication, to the devotion to Allah. Especially in your prayer. If you want to have a contact with Allah, this is the real place where you can have this contact with Allah. Hmm? 
Avoid women. Avoid beautiful pictures. Avoid it. Uh, because there's a warning here. You may spoil your religion. And once you spoil your religion, there's something that you may miss at the Day of Judgment. The Prophet ﷺ said, there are three eyes that will not be seeing fire. The third one, that cried a cause of fearing Allah. The second one, the eye that kept guarding for the sake of Allah. And the third one, the eye that closed itself from the prohibitions of Allah. You know the meaning of prohibitions? Yes. this question hmm. it's like he says uh, <clears throat> what are the best things that uh, the, the teenagers can do is that what you mean what is the best thing yeah. apart from uh, apart from uh, and, uh, he wants to say like uh, what, what is the best thing what, what is the best uh, advice to the youth yeah. generally uh, to do in order to close to Allah's Prophet. That is the main question. That's what I'm saying. That's what he's saying. And that's my answer. Because my because because try to avoid mix mixture with women. Unless if it's important, there's no way out. Okay? But apart from that, try your best. Because there are two things that destroy the person's religion. Shahwa and Shubha. Shahwa and Shubha. Okay? And I really mean it. Okay? There's a question here about is it haram to get a nose piercing? Is it haram to, to get a nose piercing? It may be beneficial. It may be beneficial to drag the person as they drag the cow. Why oh, you did not understand me. There's no benefit. Okay, but what I'm saying, usually, why they pierce a creature by, by its nose? In the farms, they do it for the cows, just to drag them. So why do we need that? <laughs> That's what I meant. Why do I need it? Um, yeah, this is uh, Islamically had not been done. Okay? There is something natural of the piercing. For example, to put something here. But to put it here and here and, and the upper side of the, of, uh, the, of the ear and then in the nose. And I'm afraid if I say yes, then they're going to be asking, what about the lips? What about the tongue? What about the navel? What about something else? Oh my God. No. These things, these things are, we know that these are fashion, a new fashion. People used not to be doing this. Yes, in the past, the Hindus used to be doing that. Yes, and until, that, until now they do. So this is the habit of the Hindus, of uh, the people here. So we should not be imitating them. The Prophet said, I said Salam, you're going to imitate those who preceded you, even if they, if it becomes a fashion that you enter a hole of, uh, of a rat or something, you're going to be doing it like that. So the, the companion said, are you talking about the Jews and the Christians? The Prophet said, who else? So I, I don't recommend it. Uh, and I say it's haram, yes. McDonald's. McDonald's haram. <clears throat> if you're talking about uh, McDonald's politically, I, I don't know. I don't know what is the question is uh, intending. Is it uh, political haram? Politically haram? Because the owner of McDonald's is a Jew, etc., etc. <laughs> This is a procedure that some people, sometimes people can take, and it is allowed. Like, if you remember the story of Thumamah ibn Athal, 
when he went after he became Muslim, he went to perform Umrah. Please, excuse me, brother. Excuse me. Hello. Hello, brothers. Can you listen? Please. Thumama um, bin Athal. He became Muslim. Then he went to Mecca. The people of Mecca recognized him that he's doing something Islamically. Tawaf, etc. It's like the way Muhammad وسلم, was doing. So they said, Sabata? He became Sabit? You see, they used to be giving false nicknames for the companions as people today do it today. They say, Wahhabi, etc., etc. So they said to him, Sabata? He said, No, but I became Muslim. So they, 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 they warned him, they wanted to capture him. And he said, Wallahi, if you do something wrong to me, you know that your trade on the way, the way of your trade passes by my city. Wallahi, if you catch me, nothing, no way for you to pass there by. And you know how valuable for you is this passage. <coughs> Go ahead and do it if you want. So they, they had to leave him. They released him by force because of this. So if a Muslim takes on himself this because of, for example, like Starbucks, or they said, yes, we want to support the, the Israelites against the Palestinians, etc. They have the right to do that. But you can't say to other people who disagreed with this, you can't say to them that it's haram to go inside, it's haram to buy, for example. For example, myself, I like to, to buy apple pie, for example. <laughs> so, doesn't mean that if the one I'm eating now is haram. No, it's not haram. But it, there's nothing wrong to take that procedure, okay? Uh, uh, sympathizing your brothers in Gaza, in Palestine. Yes, why not? Because I hear some people saying this bid'ah. How come? So, Mama bin Athal did it. How can we say it's bid'ah? But the, if we're talking about the type of the food there, that's another issue. If that means the, 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 the mac itself, the meat itself, yeah, we say it's not Islamic. It is not Islamic. And they did not say this is Islamic. So we don't eat it. But if you're talking about ice cream, apple pie, okay, so there's nothing wrong with that. Unless by yourself, you make it uh, uh, forbidden on yourself, sympathizing with your brothers in Palestine, so it's okay. Is it haram to pluck uh, eyebrows? Now, there's a test. This is a, this is a, this is a critical uh, issue um, <clears> that scholars spoke about. I'm not in a position, but I say what I have read. That they said it's not allowed unless something harm, harmful takes place, such as falling, the falling hair on the eye, etc. Something abnormal that. You know, uh, so this is this is not this is allowed, but generally, in general, it is not allowed to unpluck to to pluck, especially when now the the type of plucking becomes in a tattoo shape. You know, they shave, they kill the cells. Halas, there is no growing, no more growing cells here, and they do because they sew it. They saw it, <coughs> which is not allowed. This is changing the, the creation of Allah. Okay? And th this so-called tattoo is not Islamic, is not allowed. It used to be good for animals to be signified. An animal to be signified from another animal, yes. But you're not those kind of cattles, so we need these kinds of tattoos. Again we say, this is a Westerner fashion in which we are not supposed to be imitating and doing. If a person <coughs> regularly prays Qiyam and in the they... Meet, in the meantime, uh, the makeup, the makeup, mm -hmm. uh, regarding that question. Mm -hmm. you, can, can, you can come, make a comment please. Uh, I would like to make a comment. In the meantime, uh, 
this is woman issue. It's not man issue. Uh, Mecca actually is for women, especially the young women. Uh, the makeup. I suggest. I suggest the sister, Muslim sister, should only do this when she's married. And the makeup is only when you are at home. When you are at home. Many times people ask, especially young ones, the matter is it haram or halal? Is it makruh or, or now it comes to solo fiqh? Is it kada uh, kada? I suggest the makeup is fiqh. It's shubhat. Shubhat. Rasulullah sallallahu said only one hadith about uh, the, the woman who take hairs from their faces. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said, La'an Allahu, Al-Wasima wal, La'an Allahu, Wa'ashima wal Mustawshima, Wal-Wasina wal Mustawshima. The woman who take the hair, yeah, and uh, fake hair, to grow their hair, is haram. Just like that. Rasulullah said that the, 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 some people they took their hairs, some women take their hairs, and this is haram. So if you use the makeup, what happens? The hair disappears. So actually it's haram. But the ulama, they all agreed. وَأَجْمَعُوا وَأَجْمَعُوا يعني الاجماع That when the woman uh, uses this kind of beauty, it's only allowed when she's at home. <coughs> now there is another mistake bigger than that, which Rasulullah totally said is haram. The perfume. The perfume is totally haram for female. Except if she is at home and she wants to make herself beautiful for her man. The for husband, that time no problem. But once she comes outside with full of perfume and it's fitna, Rasulullah said, Ayyuma imra'atin ista'farat, thumma marrat ala qawmin liyadu rihaha fahiya zaniya. If any woman uses this kind of perfume, any kind of perfume, and she and she walks in front of men, she is zani. What does it mean, Zania? It means she made herself beautiful. Zina. And then what happens? The man who has weak iman can follow and say, Salam alaikum, and then start talking, and then, and then, and then, and then. So it is totally haram, this perfume. Jazakumullah khairan. And the makeup is also haram, although it is complicated. But I suggest as it's actually the fact to have. There's a question here. Uh, if a person regularly prays qiyam and they and they miss miss it one night and pr and uh, what is that? And they and they want to repay the missed, the missed salah. salah. What should they do? Are you talking about something good that you missed at night? You're talking, still talking about Qiyam? <coughs> Is he talking about a missed Qiyam? Or, I don't understand. If a person regularly prays Qiyam and they miss it at night and then want to repay it, yeah, it's actually Qiyam <coughs> Ulay. <actually. coughs> Praise Qiyam. Okay, if you, if you want to make it up, you can you can you can uh, make it make it up at the daytime. Yeah. The Prophet Sallallahu used to be doing this sometimes when he misses when he misses a, a, a voluntary prayer. He used to do it even after the next prayer time. You can do it, but view it in in what kind of vision? 
viewing it that it is something good that you missed and you want to do. But don't say this is qada that I have to do, etc. No. Barakallah Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.